Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Clark University New Undergraduate Family and Friends Final Orientation Webinar. We are very excited to have you all today, and I am joined with some incredible colleagues um, to talk about academic support and engagement opportunities for our undergraduate students. Um, my name is Danielle Morgan Acosta. She, her pronouns, I serve as the Associate Dean for Student Engagement and Belonging. Um, and I'm excited to have you all here. A few housekeeping um, items. Please, if you have any questions, use the Q&A feature. Um, we will be answering those throughout the webinar and take any additional questions after everyone has presented. Um, it's just harder for us to utilize the chat feature. Um, and I would like to start by just having everyone um, introduce themselves uh, so you get to know some of the staff members that are on the screen. Um, and Dominica, I will start with you. Hi, Danielle. Hi, everyone. My name is Dominica Perone. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the director for the Office of Community Engagement and Volunteering. Thank you. And Della? Hello, my name is Bella Burke. I'm the Assistant Director of Academic Support and Care. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm excited to be here tonight. Elizabeth. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Gittins. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the Senior Associate Director of Career Education in the Career Connection Center. Peyton. Good evening, everyone. Peyton Wu. I use they, them pronouns, and I serve as the Director for Identity, Student Engagement, and Access. Mike. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Hardy. I use he and his pronouns, and I serve as the Director of Student Leadership and Programming. And Alyssa. Can you hear me? Yep. You can hear me? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a little bit of a technical difficulty, but my name is Alyssa Briggs and I'm the director of um, the Office of Study Abroad and Away. And hopefully I'll get my kinks ironed out by the time I have to present. So sorry about that. Looking forward to talking more. Thanks, everybody. Um, so want to just dive right into some of our content for you all today. Um, and really that's all about the power of outside of the classroom learning and development and the many ways that Clark supports your students holistic growth and learning um, throughout a variety of things. And so we know that um, hopefully that's one of the reasons why your student chose Clark was all of the great opportunities that there are to really learn and grow and think about how they want to um, become global citizens and change the world. We know that this helps them deepen um, their learning and understanding and provide practical and transformational experiences for them that help them with future careers or future life goals. Um, we support developmental skills um, that employers want. And I know Elizabeth will be sharing more information about all of the ways that we are able to kind of highlight that for our students. Um, create the holistic collegiate experience, those memories that will last forever, um, and really support a student's sense of belonging and the community that they have on campus so that they can thrive through their classes and the work and their internships and all of the things that they're doing, um, and hopefully help them develop and sustain strong relationships. So we think this is critical to the undergraduate experience and really central to what makes Clark a special place. Um, we encourage all of our students to get involved on campus. Many of your undergrads um, participated in the involvement fair and the community engagement and volunteering fair a few weeks ago to get to know those clubs. Um, maybe they've gone and experienced some of our activities to help them engage in the Worcester community and learn more about um, really the place that they are living and calling home for the next couple of years. Um, enhancing the Clark experience with an international or away opportunity. So another way to kind of think through growth and really expand their horizons and stretch what they understand about themselves and the world. Um, and exploring career interests and paths um, through internships, through job fairs, through networking with all of our fabulous alumni. There's really a lot of connections that Clark has to offer and learning across difference and expanding a sense of self-identity as they think more about how identity shows up and impacts their life. Um, and all of the resources that we have for them outside of the classroom, um, because college courses uh, feel a lot different 
than high school courses. And even um, for some of our transfer students, the clerk experience might look very different um, than other places that they've been. And so we have a lot of different ways to help them think about their learning that we're going to share with you today. I want to get started uh, with Mike and just talking about really what it means to be involved on campus and how to engage um, in the Clark community. Hey everyone, so the Office of Student Leadership and Programming is really looking towards um, making sure your students have a way to connect with other folks on campus, as well as sort of just connect with uh, Worcester as a whole. So this past year, we started two different programs, Clark After Dark and Day Trip and Weekends. Clark After Dark is a way for students to sort of engage and be social with uh, other students on campus um, after dark. So on Friday and Saturday nights, we have some programming happening. This Friday, we have some mini golf happening with a blacklight special in Tilton um, Friday night from nine to midnight. And then uh, the Saturday, we'll actually be sending some students to the Botanical Gardens uh, close nearby Worcester so they can sort of get involved with that. The other thing that they're going to be able to do is be involved with our over 120 plus uh, undergraduate organizations. So this ranges from identity-based groups, interest groups, to academics and everything in between. And so they have the opportunity to really get connected with an organization that is something that they really um, enjoy and want to thrive in. One of the ways that students are able to find out about the events that are happening on our campus is sort of twofold. One is through a Monday and Thursday inter, um, email called the What's Happening email. But for live up-to-date, seeing what's actually happening on campus, if they download the Cork app, they'll be able to see all the events that are happening on campus that are open to them. Um, and so that's a great way for them to see what events are happening on campus and are ready to go. The other thing that we have sort of going on with our office this semester is um, some leadership opportunities. So our identity leadership retreat is happening a uh, week from Friday. We're taking some students off campus to a, a location in Rhode Island for a weekend of sort of leadership development, identity focused, looking at that. And then we'll also be launching our Emerging Leaders Institute. It's a six week program. It's free for all uh, undergrad students to participate in and really a way for them to explore their own leadership development. SLP is really sort of the driving factor through some of our um, traditions here on campus. So a lot of those traditions will be happening in, in the spring semester. So our International Gala, Spree Day, Senior Week. But along the way, we'll also be having um, some heritage months that our clubs as well with our um, uh, collaboration with ICEA will be helping with. But really, we're just trying to make sure that students have an opportunity to connect and build connections on campus. All right, I'm going to get started now for folks um, talking a little bit about community engagement and the community engagement and volunteering office. So our office is all about exploring, volunteering, working and learning in Worcester. Um, as a Clark alumni myself, I always say that Clark's what brought me to Worcester, but Worcester's what got me to stay. Um, and so I'm very excited to work from our office to bring that perspective to students and ensuring that students who are coming to Clark are able to build their own relationships with the Worcester community. And so our office does <clears throat> student staff and faculty engagement, and that could look like community engaged learning inside and outside of the classroom. It could be educational or experiential programming, such as taking the WRTA to Worcester Pride, um, promoting events like Start on the Street, which is an awesome, um, you know, artist market that takes place in Worcester, or a cultural programming like the Caribbean Festival. We also oversee the community-based student employment program, so students who have federal work study will be able to work with nonprofit community partners in Worcester and get paid through our office. And then we also facilitate volunteering experiences, whether that be through programming in our office or just trying to work with different clubs that do some of that work, matchmaking with community partners or being a thought partner in just having some of those conversations. Um, we do also promote civic engagement and voter registration. So yesterday was National Voter Registration Day, and we were very excited as a part of our speaker series to welcome Senator Kennedy and Representative David LaBeouf um, to campus while also working with the Clark Dems to do um, voter registration. Um, we do also share some information with students about how to get around Worcester. Um, we do recognize that, you know, Worcester, uh, you know, there may be some challenges if you don't have a vehicle in getting around. 
And so arming students with the knowledge that they need in terms of how to access the WRTA, which is Worcester's Public Transit, it is currently free um, and was made free through community organizing. Many Clark campus students or other members have been a part of that process as well. Um, so we always love to share a little bit of that story with students. Um, you can take the WRTA to Union Station, which then connects you to Boston uh, in case you need to take a train uh, to get to the airport. Um, we do also do walking tours through the CEB office. So through during orientation um, and with different organizations across campus that might wanna plan something like that, we can schedule a walking tour around the Main South neighborhood and talk about some of the history um, in terms of Clark's relationship with our, our community stakeholders and other um, community organizations that are within walking distance. Volunteering in Worcester, um, we are very excited to start welcoming and educating um, campus and community partners about our latest platform. It's called Give Pulse. Um, anyone who has a Clark email address is able to log in through single sign-on and be able to see volunteer opportunities that community partners are posting right on that webpage there. Um, so any anyone will be able to click that link go check it out, see what's already posted on there. And we are also excited to do some onboarding with community engaged clubs, community engaged faculty members and students so that they can start tracking their own community engagement hours. And by the time that they leave Clark, they will be able to say that they've contributed maybe a hundred hours to community engagement, maybe more. Um, so this is another exciting platform that we are excited to start welcoming uh, to the Clark campus community. And then working in Worcester, I previously shared a little bit about this, our community-based student employment program. Right now we have over 20 community partners. We have some awesome photos here of the different partners that are part of this program that are hosting uh, Clark students who have federal work study. It could be anything from doing some urban gardening, the Maine South CDC does urban housing, Neighborhood Strings is an awesome program where students who are musically inclined get to do that work with youth from the neighborhood, or you might be working at, an, at a gallery, such as the bottom photo at Arts Worcester. So students can use Handshake um, to see those job opportunities and apply there. And then last but not least, of course, we have learning in Worcester. And learning takes place at different touch points around campus. It could be service learning through, again, uh, whether they're doing that work through a club, through one of our office events, um, or different programs. Um, some summer programs, if students stay on campus, have aspects of service learning or alternative spring break trips as well. Um, internships, where we overlap with career connections in terms of experiential internship opportunities and opportunity funding that's there for that. Top courses or problem of practice courses. Um, students can look at that when they register for classes, and many of those classes do work with a community partner on a problem of practice. Our community speaker series, we love to welcome guest lecturers, compensate them, um, facilitate dialogue between leaders from the Worcester community and Clark students. Um, and then, of course, as I mentioned, alternative spring break. Last year was our first year doing an alternative spring break program in Worcester. This is an awesome photo of students who participated in that and worked at our uh, a homeless shelter making sandwiches and sorting clothes. Thanks. All right, thanks, Dominica. Can everybody hear me now? Danielle. Yep, yes. okay. Okay, thanks. Um, so hi, everybody. Um, I'm Alyssa Briggs. I'm the Director of Study Abroad and Away at Clark. Um, thank you so much for joining us. We can probably just go to the next slide. Um, so I'm here to talk a little bit about studying abroad and away. So currently my office is called the Office of Study Abroad and Away. Um, and sometimes I do like to just clarify what the away means because it can be a little confusing because abroad is also technically away. Um, but generally speaking, um, study abroad is what we call the opportunity to engage in four credit academic coursework, internships, research, and service away from the Worcester campus. So Dominica just talked about all the ways that students can get involved um, in Worcester. I'm sort of the other side of that coin. We try to get students to really build on their experiences working in the community, to go abroad, and then hopefully come back and continue what they learn while they're in the community. So just to tie it together a little bit. 
Um, and our away programs, we do also offer three domestic programs where students can study um, and do an internship in Boston, Washington, D.C., and in San Juan, Puerto Rico. So those are sort of what we call the away program. So that is study abroad and away at Clark. And the reason I start with a definition is because oftentimes people think that studying abroad is just courses or just language, um, but actually students can do internships, research and service for credit um, while they're abroad. Um, Clark, the way that study abroad works here is that students choose from an approved list, which is over 50 or 60 programs dep um, depending on the day. Um, that they can choose from to study abroad, and that includes in 30-ish 30, 30 countries on six continents, and really students can choose um, a program for any major, any of their minors, or any of our PLS requirements. Students can take courses um, away from the, the, the Worcester campus on those, um, for those requirements. Um, we always say at Clark that there's not a one-size-fits-all program for all students. So of the 50 or 60 programs that we approve, we really endeavor to get them to be a really best fit programs for all kinds of students. So um, below, I'm not going to go over the whole chart, um, but you can see that there's about three buckets that we put our programs into, ranging from a study center where students can go um, and take classes or do an internship or research um, in a program designed for U.S. university students, which are really um, providing a high level of student support. If you have accommodations, you're definitely welcome and we'll be able to get them on a study center program um, and offer a very high level of support and a very sort of specific um, bespoke experience. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, we have direct enroll or exchange programs where students can spend a full semester or a year just as an international student at a foreign university. Um, so again, maybe for the more independent learner or a student who needs specific courses, maybe in a STEM field, um, it might offer some courses that Clark doesn't offer. Um, and then in the middle, we have hybrid programs. So students can sort of have what we call the best of both worlds. Um, they might have access to an entire course catalog of a large university, um, but still will have the opportunity to have student support from another um, from a U.S.-based program provider. So we definitely make sure that students can be supported no matter where they are, but from somebody who might need a little bit more um, of, a, of a curated experience or a person who's a little bit more of an independent learner, there's something for everyone. You can go to the next slide. Um, so this is just a visual slide that I like to include. Um, we say that, you know, studying abroad or away is complementary to students' Clark education. It is not intended to take the place of what they learn at Clark. Um, so these are just some examples of, of courses students have taken for credit in other places. Um, and, you know, I think for me personally, these are very exciting courses. You know, if you're studying um, international development, it's really, we have a wonderful program at Clark for that. Um, but they want students to go abroad and learn, you know, critical reasoning and con contemporary development studies or, you know, undocumented eco-feminist and queer contemporary Latin American liberation theologies in Mexico. So we just like to show this as a visual um, for kind of some of the exciting things students can do to complement their studies um, on the Clark campus. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so a little bit more of away from like the fun, where can I go? Um, this is how also um, billing and budgeting works at Clark. So we are fortunate to have a tuition, a homeschool tuition model. So students pay tuition to Clark um, for the semester that they're abroad, which means they can also take their scholarship loan and financial aid. So that's really a good thing for all students. Most of our students are getting some sort of aid, so they are able to take that with them when they go abroad. Um, there is a $2,000 fee for each semester away. So that actually, and this is a uh, very new update, it includes international insurance. So students don't have to pay that separately. And it does take the, um, the place of any fees that students have while they're on campus, and then they pay their housing to a program. So we do endeavor to keep the cost of our programs, including housing and meals, um, about equivalent to a cost of a semester at Clark. Um, but of course, there is a variation. You know, if a student wants to go to London and go out to eat every night versus if they're going to stay in a homestay, maybe somewhere in Latin America. Um, but again, that's something we can help students with. Uh, we have budget sheets and we have estimated cost sheets. So we help students, I, and I should have mentioned this at the beginning, um, through every phase of the application process in terms of advising them about billing and budgeting. And also we help with applying for scholarships. So even though students can take their general scholarships and loans and financial aid with them, we also offer um, support in applying for external scholarships specific to studying abroad. So we offer some of them through Clark and some through external. And again, we want to help help um, your student identify and apply for these scholarships. 
you can go on. Um, these are just a few of our requirements. We really don't try to gatekeep. We want as many students to go abroad as possible. Um, we do encourage students and require that students are on campus for one year before they apply. We do this because we want to make sure students are settled in. They have a chance to kind of get to know themselves at college to sort of establish their support network um, before they think about then just like leaving again. Um, most students study abroad in their junior year, but of course they can apply to study their second semester of their sophomore year. And also they can go in their senior year, but again, most will do it in their junior year, which is pretty much the norm across the board. Um, we want you to be in good financial standing um, and also have, we have a recommended GPA, but we took away the requirement because we do know that some students thrive in a smaller abroad environment and we don't want to penalize someone who may struggle a little bit more um, in a traditional um, learning environment at Clark. And we do have programs for every major. So if you are thinking, oh, I'm studying physics, I can't study abroad, that's not true. Um, please come see us and we can help you find a best fit program. Okay. And then sort of just to, to finish up, hopefully, um, you know, for everyone on this call, you might already think that studying abroad is a good idea, um, but there might be some families on the call who aren't so sure, don't know much about it, but we do want to let you know that research does show that studying abroad or away um, is, a, is a high impact experience, which sort of was mentioned at the beginning of this presentation in terms of experiential learning being so good for students' development. Um, it does help hone their professional skills that employers will look for, which Elizabeth will talk about in just a few minutes. Um, so even though students sometimes you know, have some challenges, that is where we want them to grow and be comfortable um, learning new skills that are gonna help them apply to graduate schools and jobs when they um, graduate. And then at the bottom there, you can see even though it does sound like everyone and their mother is studying abroad, really, it's a very unique experience amongst undergraduate students in the country, and only about one to two percent of students will do it. So we really do encourage students to, um, you know, go away from campus, go abroad for a semester, a year, a summer, or a May term, and then you know to come back and and keep in touch with us and discover you know how they might be able to incorporate their study abroad back home. I think that is the end. Yep. Hey, hi. I am Elizabeth Gittins from the Career Connection Center, and I'm so happy to be here with all of you tonight. I want to start by explaining to you some of the ways in which the Career Connection Center helps support students' career exploration and education and development. So I wanted to talk about five different areas of our office um, that are here to support your students. The first office that we have is the Office of On-Campus Student Employment. So students receive help through the Career Connection Center and this office before they even arrive on campus for their first year. So students that are looking for on-campus jobs, um, we start working with them throughout the summer to help prepare them. We also work with students up to a year after graduation. So we're really here for each step of the way. Um, the Office of On-Campus Student Employment helps students find jobs that are either on campus or within the community. And it's really a great way for students to build skills and gain some professional experience. Another office that we have is the Office of Employer Engagement, which is now called the Office of Employer and Alumni Engagement. And what this office does is this office is responsible for working closely with employers to establish relationships that benefit Clark students. This can be through opportunities like job shadows, career tracks, internships, and career networking opportunities. This office also hosts several job fairs a year. We have our next one or our first one of the year coming up on October 4th. And this office also hosts a series of six career exploration weeks where students can attend panels that are hosted by alumni and employers. They can attend workshops and they can also attend career pop-ups where employers are waiting and ready to recruit students for jobs and internships. We have a wonderful alumni community here at Clark, and you can find a lot of them on Clark Connect. Clark Connect is our alumni engagement platform. It has slightly over, I think, 6,000, between 6,000 and 7,000 users right now. And what students use Clark Connect for is they go on it to find people with similar interests and aspirations to them, to reach out for mentorship, um, to network, and to also ask for help with a series of over 20 help 
So um, over 20 health topics that we have identified for students. So students might reach out for help applying to graduate school. Um, they might reach out for help uh, with an alum to find out about an industry that they're interested in, or just to ask certain questions about, you know, what it's like to be a certain identity in the STEM field. So Clark Connect is a great resource for students to become and stay a part of the Clark community. We also offer opportunity funding. So students who are searching for opportunities and looking to build experience over the summer can apply for funding. That funding is typically up to $5,000. And that funding can be used to support research projects and low paying or unpaid internships. Typically students will apply for funding and receive up to $5,000, which can cover the cost of living. It can co cover the cost of travel overseas, or any materials required to help them complete that project. And then we have career development and education. So this is where we help students to identify their values and their skills and their interests through career advising. We also help them explore different career paths through these advising sessions. We offer skill building workshops and we visit classrooms to give them an overview of the services that we provide just to make sure that we're meeting students where they're at and letting them know the resources available to them. We also have a career lab, which is open Monday through Friday, um, every single day of the, the week, but except for the weekend, where students can come and meet with a graduate assistant who can help them prepare their job application materials. So you can go to the next slide. Thanks. So one of the things that we like to tell students a lot is that your career doesn't always equal your major. So a lot of students are surprised to find that they might be interested in one area, but they might find jobs that are relevant to them or internships that excite them in places that they might not have anticipated. So in part of this advising and helping students diversify their options, we really encourage them to go to career fairs and these career exploration weeks where they can start to meet some different employers and build their network. What you see on the screen is just a very small sampling of some of the employers who have come to campus um, within the past year or two. And then last but not least on the next slide, thank you. One of the things that we really encourage students to do is to seek experience, gain experience. And that can be in the form of study abroad. That can be gaining experience through the Office of Community Engagement and Volunteering or joining a club and taking a leadership position. But we emphasize the importance of having those high impact experiences where students are getting out there, gaining experience, and then we help them reflect upon that and translate those experiences um, so that they're ready for whatever comes next. And from this, you can see that the impact of this is that at graduation within six months, 98% of undergraduate alumni are employed in school or engaged in voluntary service, such as AmeriCorps or the Peace Corps. A huge number of students, 94% of students are actively engaged in co-curricular activities. So they're joining clubs, they're taking up leadership positions. And then 84% of students before their senior year are involved with some type of experiential learning, which can be an internship or can be other related activities. And that number really goes up your senior year as well, when a lot of students are really starting to see the reality of the future ahead and know that some experience will be helpful for them to be competitive candidates. So that is all I have to share tonight, but I'm always excited to answer questions in the chat if you have them. So good evening, everyone. This is Peyton again. I use they, them pronouns, and I serve as the director for Identity Student Engagement and Access. Um, so our office, Identity Student Engagement and Access, really centers the needs of our first-generation students, our uh, students of color or our larger BIPOC community, and our students who identify within the LGBTQ plus community. And so there are really four categories uh, in which our office seeks to support and center the needs of those students with an emphasis on making sure those students feel like they're not only getting to learn about their identities, but also getting to celebrate those identities and really finding community and a sense of belonging during their time at Clark. Mm -hmm. So some folks might be familiar with our two pre-orientation programs, which occur in August. It's our 18-day experience and Connections are five-day experience. But during the school year, we also offer a variety of programming, including affinity spaces, which are really spaces that center the needs of specific populations, including our women of color, our men of color, queer and trans students of color, trans and gender diverse uh, community, 
LGBTQ plus questioning or those who are still thinking about coming out um, and really are a Latinx, Latin A population. We also offer a variety of History and Heritage Month programming, which is a combination of both trying to create space for students to be able to uplift and celebrate their identities, while also learning more about their identities. So we are currently uh, in the midst of September. So September 15th through October 15th is Latin A Latinx Heritage Month. Starting in October, uh, we'll mark the start of LGBTQ plus History Month. November marks Native Indigenous Heritage Month. And then starting in February, we celebrate and honor Black History Month. In March, we celebrate Women's History Month. And within that month, we actually have a Pride Week, um, recognizing that Pride Month is typically in June and students would not be here. So we try to celebrate those together. And then April uh, is AAPI Heritage Month, which is what we celebrated, even though it's historically um, housed during May. Um, and we also honor Arab American Heritage Month during the month of April. We also offer a variety of identity-based support, including supporting our identity-based organizations, also known as Mosaic, in partnership with student leadership and programming. We offer a variety of gender and sexuality programming throughout the year, um, and also offer visibility on certain uh, celebration days and such. So just to give you a sneak peek as to some things that are coming up, um, on the next slide, you will notice that I've just highlighted a couple of events that are coming up. On the right-hand side, I've highlighted when all of our affinity spaces meet. They do meet bi-weekly, and so I've listed the start date in case students are interested and looking at when the event might be. And then on the left-hand side are some of the events coming up, including we have some Latin dance lessons that we're offering throughout the month, September and October. Our kickoff event for LGBTQ History Month is on October 6th. We celebrate Latinx Excellent on Sunday, October 15th, which is also the same uh, weekend as Family Weekend. Uh, Thursday, we honor Coming Out Day and Observation. Um, at the end of October, we'll have a costume ball and costume contest. And then in November, we will be hosting a Friendsgiving. Um, and so if you have any questions about other upcoming events or ways that your students uh, could get involved, feel free to uh, message me directly or put something in the Q&A. Hello again, everyone. My name is Della. I'm the Assistant Director of Academic Support and Care, and I just wanted to introduce our office briefly before I talk about it more in depth. So we have our director, Shay Hopley malko our Associate Director, um, Millie De La Cruz, myself, and our other Assistant Director, Lawrence Deer. So the Academic Support Center houses peer tutoring as well as the Writing Center. We're located in the Academic Commons, on the first floor of the library. And we offer a variety of academic supports to students. So we have subject specific tutoring for a variety of classes that we'll talk about in a second, as well as peer success coaching and tutoring where students can meet with a peer to talk about general success tips like note-taking or study strategies. We also house the writing center and we'll meet with students at any stage of the writing process so they can bring um, the instructions for an essay, or they can bring an essay they've written to get edited. We also offer one-on-one -on -one academic coaching with our pro staff in the office as well. We're open from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. weekdays and also offer some remote hours on the weekends for tutoring as well. And these are a list of the courses that we offer tutoring support in. So we can see a variety of biology courses, um, biochemistry, chemistry, psychology, as well as management. Computer science, we also offer tutoring in languages, um, geography, math, and econ. So students can go on our website and they can schedule an appointment with a tutor. Um, some tutors, offer tutoring for a variety of courses, and those tutors may also offer peer success tutoring as well. They can sign up for a time that works for them, and they can also sign up um, to meet in person or remotely as well. Um, also on our website are our emails for our pro staff members. If they wanna reach out and schedule a meeting with a pro staff in the office, they can do that as well. Thank you. It was so much information. Hopefully, um, 
that has been useful. We will hold on for just a minute to see if there's any more uh, questions in the chat. I know some of this is a lot of information that you might want to touch base with your student about and then ask additional questions or have them reach out to one of our offices. Um, everyone is so eager to support your students as they navigate their journey at Clark and hopefully um, it has been a month so far, um, almost since they've been back on campus or on campus. Um, and so hopefully they've been enjoying that experience. I know in the residence halls, they've been coming up with their roommate agreements. They've been having one-on-one -on -one meetings with their RAs. Um, the peer mentors have been doing a lot about um, activities and ways to get involved in Worcester as well as the greater community, but also thinking about organizing their class schedule and thinking about more resources. Um, and so uh, we hope that this webinar has been useful to you. Um, we also are excited and hopefully you'll be able to join us for Family Weekend, which is just a little less than a month away, October 13th through 15th. You can find more information on the website. And if you ever have any questions about this webinar or anything else, please feel free to reach out to success at clarku.edu and we will direct you to exactly where you need to go if we can't answer your question. Um, have a wonderful evening and we hope to see you soon.